How's it going guys? I am your local local historian and today as I think about myself going to grad school in the next two three weeks I kind of want to give a little bit of advice for those who are just starting college or about to start college and even those you know who have had a year or so experience in college and I just want to give you things that I learned and some of the things I thought about that I should have done as I was going through my undergrad career. So I was lucky enough to start my undergrad career at 23 which means that I was a little bit older, a little bit wiser, and I kind of understood what I wanted to do with life because I was tired of working really crappy manual labor jobs. And so, here we are. The first thing that I would really advise a lot of people to do is find out who they are, their advisors are early and send them emails before the semester starts, but also once the semester starts within the first week or two, meet with them in their office hours and just make sure to meet with them like once a month just so they kind of get an understanding of who you are as a person, what your general overall plans are for the semesters, for your experience in undergrad, as well as, you know, if you want to go to grad school after, or if you want to go to, like, just the workforce after, not just the workforce after, but you want to get a career going after, they will help you kind of with what classes you should be taking, they might help you with internships. They might help you with other ways of navigating through the school system and the like. They might even give you, you know, hey, this job is looking for someone to hire. You might want to work for them, see if you really like the job. And I would also say with the professors, meet with your professors as well. If your professor is always your advisor, even better. But I would say meet with your professors, you know, go to their office hours once a month, touch base, you know, find out how the class is going. And, you know, find, you know, get those more intimate conversations and build a relationship with them. Because if you want to go into the workforce after or if you want to go into grad school, they will be able to help you with letters of recommendation or get you getting you into certain universities, get you certain interviews, something like that. But they'll also make it so that the more you meet with your professor, the better chances of you having a higher grade overall is. And I mean... You don't have to just go to the office hours of your professor. If your advisor is your professor, be even better. But even talking with them before after class, most likely after class, because a lot of my professors showed up like on the dot or a little bit late, I would say talk with them if they're walking to a class and you don't have a class immediately after, or if it's in the same area as their next class, walk with them and just talk with them. It doesn't have to be about anything with school. It doesn't have to be anything academic. If they're a sports fan and you're the same sport fan, talk with them about that. You know, just general chit-chat. It'll build rapport. Again, it'll help with the letter of recommendations. And at the end of the semester, if you have an 89, they might bump it up to a 90 or something like that. It could help you in the long run. But also help you have more advocates with me and your advisor and professor. So if you want to study abroad, if you want to get into certain classes that you might not be able to get into, or some other things, they will be your strongest advocate. And that is the biggest thing because they are the go-between between you and the university, the deans, and everything else. I would also say meet with the dean if you can. Meet with the chairs of your department just so they're familiar with who you are and kind of just know you. Not necessarily on a first-name basis, but if they see you in, in, on campus, they might say hi. They might look at you be like, oh, I know who you are. Something like that. It can go a long way with just the minimal meet, meeting with the dean or the chair once a semester, maybe twice a semester. So that if you have a problem with a professor, that dean knows you not just as a person going to them for a problem, but also as a person that, you know, you spoke with them, they kind of get a feel for who you are. So they can kind of help distinguish if this problem is a true issue that has to be addressed or if it's just an, a student annoyed with their grade or something like that. Obviously, if it's something serious, that's a whole different ballgame. I'm talking about the academic side. Now... When it comes to taking classes, I always advise people to take the bare minimum amount of classes that they have to every semester. So if you're a full-timer and you need 12 credits, just take 12 credits. If you, Obviously, if you have to take like a one credit or no credit class, you're going to take five classes. But I would say take the minimum amount of classes that you can every semester because it really does reduce the amount of stress for your entire day. And it also makes it so you can focus on those classes a lot more. I understand that you want to get through college quickly. You want to, you know, just get it over and done with. And you might say, oh, I can pile things up. I was one of those people. I took five, six, eight classes 
in some semesters and it really did overall affect the quality of my work, my ability to pay attention and just my day-to-day -day life with so much work going on that I would have rather have taken the four classes, been there for the extra year instead of graduating in three years just so I had less stress on myself overall. Obviously, I was one of those pandemic people at the end of my college time. So that played a role, but take the minimum amount of classes. If you're a part-timer taking one, two, three classes a semester, good for you, great. Just focus on the work. Nothing wrong with being a part-timer in university. I advocate strongly for a lot of people to do that, especially if you're one of those people that wants to pay as you go. Because I understand that tuition is ridiculous. I'm paying off my debts. I paid off 10000 still owe $38,000. I started with $40,000 in student loans. So that's great. I would also say with classes, take a wide variety of classes. Now, obviously take what's in your major. But when it comes to the core curriculum or the UCCs, as we called it in William Patterson, take something that you wouldn't normally take. Take classes, you know, not just the level 100s, but 200s, 300s, 400s. Take those classes. Look at the classes that will knock off the most amount of UCCs and take those classes so that you can just get through a lot of those things a lot quicker. You might have to make up the credits overall, but it'll knock out those classes for something that you more want to take. I would say, like, if you're a business major, take an anthropology class. Take, like, a graphic design class. Take something like that. Take a sociology class. Something else that is so far out of your major that it could give you a different perspective, or it might even be an idea for a, you know, a second major. It might even be an idea for a minor. Now, when it comes to minors, I always suggest a language be a minor. Um, my majors were initially Japanese and history. Then it went from history to East Asian studies because of their structuring of the program. I would have been, had to been there for an extra two years. I just simply couldn't do that. So I would definitely say look to do a minor in a language. Don't have to be the best at that language, but it will help you down the road for other companies. You know, I would say really try to learn another language while you're in university, especially because you have to take other classes that, you know, language can knock off the UCCs, the core curriculum. And if you're going to be going into the workforce or you're going to be going into grad school you knocked out things that you already needed to and it looks good on a resume or if you want to study abroad or if you want to work for another company abroad also it opens up the opportunity to work for other companies abroad or go to grad school abroad in other languages depending on how good you get it some programs in grad school also do english taught with language programs as part of it and other work other jobs will actually have you go to their country and learn language as part of your employment and when it comes to those language classes, I would absolutely say take a language of something that you're interested in. So if you're interested in anime, manga, something like that, take that language. If you're interested in K-pop, J-pop, you know, K-pop, K-dramas, movies from Korea, might want to take Korean. And also just don't be afraid to take a language that you say you might not like. You could always just take the semester and do another one. Or you could just bang out your minimum requirement for a language doing one or two different languages and see what you like. If you don't like a language at all, that's fine, fair enough, but you banged out and you gave a good old college a try, right? I would also say possibly look into a part-time job while you are in undergrad. Now, the biggest reason I say that is not to pay off your student loans. We all know that a part-time job, even a full-time job, is not enough to pay off U.S. student loans. But what it does is it helps you structure your day and your week. So it makes so that you have to be more efficient with your time management and you have to set dedicated time to do all of your schoolwork. Instead of having the entire day and just pushing everything off and off and off, you now go, if I work four days a week, you know, four hours, six hours, what have you, every day, that means I have to get my work done because this eight, these eight hour blocks, six hour blocks, whatever, are things I have to pay attention to and I have to be actually at. Because it also gives you extra spending money. So like, you know, if you want to go party, if you want to go do something else, it gives you the ability to kind of pay for things instead of just purely relying on student loans. It's not a solution in any way, shape or form. I'm not saying that it is. And sometimes when you get your student loans, you actually have money left over 
during the semester and they give it to you. So I would suggest to do one of two things. Either if you can swing it and you don't need the money immediately right now for something urgent, put it into account and use that to help pay off your student loans as you are currently in school. Or if you're going to be doing a study abroad, use that money for the study abroad. Or if you're planning on grad school, put that money away for grad school. It's surprisingly expensive on the application as well as the initial start cost of going to grad school. I would also say when it, with that, for some reason I'm reminded, with classes, go to every class. There you go. Just go to every class. I think I already said that, but go to every class. Additionally, when it comes to school, work, everything, the balance, don't be afraid to say, if possible, I need to go part-time. Don't be afraid to say, I can only do two classes a week with working, or I can only handle two classes a week with all the attention that I can give to those classes and be active in those classes. Taking extra time to go through university is absolutely fine. There is no shame in it. It is a good move if that is the move for you. Obviously, if you're in grants, scholarships, or something else, that's a completely different ballgame. Talk with your advisors. See what you can get done. Also, don't be afraid to go, if you go into university, don't be afraid to take the step back into, you know, if you're full-time, go into part-time. Or if you're full-time and you go, I need to be full-time, but I just can't handle this workload right now, going into a community college. And again, community college, nothing wrong with community colleges. I think that they are a great tool for overall saving money you know, getting a little better, better taste of different things all around. And also for more, you know, technical school kind of thing, more career path oriented people, I would believe, at least with the under, uh, community colleges that I went to, uh, Brown Community College in Primus, New Jersey, they have a lot of technical programs that give you access to certificates and other things that will help you down the line with getting careers directly out of under, uh, the program which is a great thing for it. And I advocate greatly for those who just want a career that don't necessarily want to go to school. That could be a great thing for you. I mean, there are also apprenticeships and other things like that. But I would say if you got to go to college and do, you do, you know, some kind of technical stuff, feel free to do it because you can always go to a four-year degree la later. Also, don't be afraid to withdraw from a class. If you're doing really poorly, either it's too much workload, you and the teacher don't get along, something like that, don't be afraid to withdraw from a class. Even if you get the W because you withdrew too late, it's better than getting an F. And you can always retake the class with another professor or another time. With that is mainly being your own advocate. I would strongly suggest everyone being their biggest advocate. Your professors and your advisors are great tools and they'll advocate for you. They will help you in every way, shape, or form. But if you are not incredibly vocal and pushing for everything that you want, and I don't mean just the things that you need, the things that you want to do, if you want to study abroad, make sure your advisors, professors know it so that they can help you guide through the program and the whole bureaucracy of your university so you can study abroad. I was having a lot of issues with my study abroad office, and that soured my taste of my university for a long period of time. But luckily for me, I was able to study abroad, but it was more so a different route than I wanted to. I didn't do a full year. I ended up doing three months, but it is what it is. At least I got the opportunity. There was some compromise there, but I got part of my end goal. I would also say when it comes to that, study abroad if you can do it. If you can manage it financially, do it. If your university has the ability, has stipends, has something else like that, do study abroad. Do it for a month. Do it for three months. Do it for a year. If you're a business person, I would say definitely do a study abroad and try to get an internship when you're doing a study abroad so that you can kind of broaden your horizons and open up opportunities for either that company in that country or they might have affiliates or partners or something like that in your home nation. More so I'm talking about with the United States with other countries. But like with language majors, science majors, anything like that, you can always look into a study abroad program for either a university that you want to apply to for grad school in a country that is very developing of that technology or the country that speaks that language natively. Other things, there are so many majors that can benefit from a study abroad if you do it right, where you are, if you're an engineering person, go to Germany or whatever. If you're a science major, go wherever that particular science is. If you're a biology major studying something specific, such as an animal, 
go to that country. It's a great thing if you're a historian or want to be a historian, go to the country of the history that you study or the particular area within your own country that you study. Also, it's very relatively young and most of us don't have a lot of responsibility in college. So I would say use that time to do things that you necessarily would not really have the chance of doing in the future. Because you might say it's stupid, it might cost money, or you say, oh, I don't need to do that. But if you do it, you're not really going to regret it. And finally, I would say enjoy your time in undergrad 100%. Enjoy your time with the friends that you make. Make friends, make relationships happen with this. Not necessarily romantic relationships, although that can happen. But also make a lot of friendships, make a lot of connections. Because the networking that you do in undergrad is invaluable. And this doesn't have to just be people within your major. Make it from all across different majors. From the going to the gym facilities at your university. Go to the gym facilities in your university. Be healthy. Sleep enough. You know, get your six to eight hours of sleep. Don't work sleep deprived. Eat a quarter way decent diet. I understand it's college. You're not going to always get access to the best food, especially if you have a forced meal hall meal plan. But going through all those things, you will be able to meet people, do your intramural sports, something like that to build up a lot of rapport with your university itself, but more so the people within your university and your cohort and other students, professors at that university, because at the end of the day, they will be the ones that will help you through your day-to-day -day life. And then once you immediately get out of university, they might be the only people that you connect with for a meaningful period of time. I mean, of the people that I went to high school with, I'm still friends with four or five of them. And of the people that I went to university with, I am still friends with two or three of them. I regularly talk to them almost every week. And they help me with opportunities and other things. And just sorting out other things that I'm trying to get through. Other than that, let me know down in the comments what your advice would be for me going into grad school. Or what advice for other people going into college you would give. And obviously, you don't need college to be successful. We all know that. But further education is always a great thing. Whether it's an internship, whether it is an apprenticeship something like that is always a great thing to look for that's it like comment subscribe video done